All right, so I'm going to go start with the quiz right here. I'm going to talk about inputs. There are three ways that we're going to do inputs. Uh, two you will use, one you won't. Um, one is the input and bindings. Um, what is the input? What is going on with the input binding? Uh, the enhanced input system. Where, and I'll show you what that is, and I'll show you what's going on with the input system. So let's just so the the input bindings. This is the original. If we go to edit uh, project settings. We want to go down to engine, and then there is input. And this is the engine, engine input. These are settings, you know, default I and I, which is kind of writable, yada yada yada. This is this is how Unreal Engine has worked from Unreal Engine one up and through early Unreal, Unreal Engine four. And basically, you had you had, you make action mappings. Um, basically, you type in something here. This would be uh, this is say some some action and this would be equivalent to like some button so action mappings are buttons axis mappings are essentially uh, triggers so um, so we're looking at, at, at so basically I've created some button um, when you open this up it'd be It'd be basically I'm going to select here and I'm going to use Q key. And now when I, you know, now I, I can look, ask for some action. And when the Q key is it, it's going to, this, this action is going to be kicked off. Action mapping is the same thing. It's just um, keyboard. Um, we're going to do B for the sake of argument right now. Um, And ultimately, this is how the engine worked once upon a time. Um, I'm actually going to delete these because I don't want these. Uh, the reason, again, they, they are now depreciating. And that's the, the, the thing here that I want you to make. So again, the answer to that first quiz, you go, it's in the project setting, and this, it, these are depreciated. They're, they want you to use the enhanced input action. So the enhanced input action is something that's in, so we go to your, um, so in the third person, there's going to be a input folder, and there's um, a mapping here for called default, and there's a folder here of actions. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new. Um, we go down to input, and input action is what we want. Um, use the IA as your again. This is how Epic is is laboring things, so we might as well stay in that. That so this would be IA fire. So later on we'll add a fire. To our character, um, when we go in, we can say what you know. What is the description of the action, um, and what is the value type? And this is important. So, buttons. They're digital. They're up or down. So they're booleans. Um, floats. So triggers are the floats. Your thumbsticks are vector two Ds, and then um, your again your the position of like your um, VR control, you know, hand, hand controllers in space would be a vector three. That's where that, that would come into play. Um, again, we're going to keep this as a Boolean. Um, one of the things is that you can add triggers. Like, how does it react? I'm actually going to add two. One is going to be for uh, press, and the other one is going to be released. And there's a whole bunch of other, other things here as well. There's a tap, pulse, press, hold and release, hold, down. Uh, all sorts of, and there's there's a, a beta for combos, but we'll leave that alone. But basically, for right now, this button we're going to trigger press and release. And with that set, um, I can now save it. I can close this window. Now we're going to go. We've got a new new action for fire. Now we need to add that to a mapping. And this is how this works: is that you can have multiple mappings act at the same time. You can remove mappings based on like, like one of the things that happens with the first-person shooter example is that when you pick up the weapon, it adds another mapping that has the fire button in it. Uh, for our purposes, we're just going to open up our mappings. We're actually going to add one again. We'll select the fire asset, IA fire, and we're just going to say um, we're going to use left mouse button. So when I click this. It's actually looking for um, the next input it reads will be what you're going what you're going to try and set. So I do want to keep left mouse button. I'm going to add. Uh, I don't jump the space. I'm 
actually going to add another one, and I'm going to use uh, Q in this case. For the sake of argument, we use Q, the Q for, for our fire button. We, um, I mean, I actually could have gone, actually, I could have <laughs> left control. That makes more sense. So, so I've got my mouse button, and I've got my left control. So now when we've got this, and we've got the, again, we'll save, we'll save this, close our window. So the pawn um, that we're working with is right here is this third person character class. And you can see already there's already some stuff here. So the first thing they do is basically they add the input mapping. So they go get the controller and get the enhancing system, enhance in, input system. I'll make sure that it's valid. And then they add the, 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 uh, the mapping to it. And that's the first thing. You'll see this in C++ and you'll see this. This is typically the first thing you'll do is you'll, uh, on a VN, you'll add your, your default mapping. Um, they've got camera controls. Here's the look. So they're taking the X and Y value of it and adding controller up and down, left and right. Here's movement. Here's the jump key. Jump, stop jumping. Um, again, we're going to go in here. We're going to go in and we're going to right click and we will actually um, we will use um, IA Fire. We're going to open this up just so we can see all of, all of the nodes. And I'm going to use starting because that's typically what I would, would want. You know, it's triggered. Is it started? Is it ongoing? So is it pressed down? Has it stopped or, or completed? I'm going to go use started. And I'm just going to do print. I'm going to print string. And it's going to be boom. And I'm going to compile this. And what we will see is when we go back uh, to again, I'm going to go back to my third person map. I'll press play and I'll go in. And I'll hit space. You can see that here is boom, 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 boom. So it's working. Um, the, so that's the, the second way. Um, the other way that we, we take the, we might will work is we'll go in, we will go to type keyboard. And I'm going to do uh, the E key for our, for, for our purposes right now. And I actually select it in this case. And you can see it's got press and release. In this case, I'm going to go out here, I'm going to do pressed. Sorry, print. And I'm just going to say E key pressed. I'll compile. I'll go back to my map. I'll press play. And then you can see again. And I'll hit the E key. So you can see both of them are working right now. So I'm going to hit escape and come back. So this is this is the first thing um, in terms of working our labs this week is just working with the inputs. Um, it will be perfectly fine to use these nodes this week, um, but ultimately this is where you would probably be heading off to towards later on with with what we're doing. I don't need a third person character at this point. So um, one of the things that the, the first lab piece. Let's actually go through the slides. Right. And I'm going to zoom through these gameplay because we've already looked at it. You know, common classes, the game mode, the signing, how to sign a game mode. We've already talked about that. We've talked about how you can override that in the uh, world settings. We can override what, what the game mode is doing. That level can override it. Uh, game state, we'll worry about game state um, later on. Um, we know about the player controller. Again, this week, again, here is enter. We will possess whoever BP car is. We will get player, get the player controller. So, again, one of the things that we're doing, um, actually, let's go over. This is actually the first lab assignment. 
So there's three exercises, and so I'm going to bring this one up. And so basically, you're going to hit the one, two, or three keys, and you're going to switch between different um, characters. So I'm going to go and I'm going to place. So these, this is another character in the scene, um, and I'm not, I'm actually going to go in and I'm go to my starter content, and I'm going to get my materials. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to retexture this, the back of this one. I'm going to use gold on this one. And also I'm going to rename it player number one. And this will make it easier to work with. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to move them. Over here. And you can see another one's already moved up. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to grab, make this one mossy. And I'm going to duplicate this one one more time. For this one, I'm basically going to take uh, use the hex, hex the mostly hex. So we, we basically, I'm just I'm adding these shaders just basically to basically make them different. All right, now that I've got them in the world, I can go. I'm going to click on player one, and I'm going to go open up the level level blueprint, and I'm going to work. work down here. So I'm, I need a reference to player one. Um, I'm going to go keyboard one. And then the next thing I need, I need to get the player controller. And here's the note, get player controller. And it's going to ask for a player controller index. Uh, Zero is the first player. And off of here is the, we can type po, po, there you go, if I can spell possess correctly. And so essentially, we, when we press this key, we want the player controller to possess a different player. And bring this in tighter. And then I'm going to basically going to do keyboard two. And I'm basically going to grab these. And I'm going to delete the player one. I'm just going to copy this two more times. So I'm going to go back into my third person map. I'm going to grab player two now and create a reference to that now. I'm going to grab these, put these in place. Go back to my third person map, select player three. Create a reference to player three, and then I need to do keyboard three. Again, I forgot to put the press here. that in or plug this one in here. So as I press between these different keys, I'm going to possess the different different each of the different uh, models.
All right, we're going to compile. We'll go back to the third person map and we'll press play. So here is the original. There's the first one. Second one's there. And the third one's up there. So I'm going to jump up here. Uh, press the first button. And you can see now I am now on the yellow, this gold version. There's there's the original. There's the, the second one. And the third one is over there. I'll press two. Here's Mossy, original. Techie and Goldie is over there. And then press three. We're on Techie now. Gold is there. Original is there. Mossy's up there. So here we are now. So this is basically the, what the lab is asking you to do. All right. Let's, let's talk about the extra credit. And this is probably, I'm really going to rewrite this and actually include this later on. So when we start the map, so we're going to actually going to go, we're going to bring this out a little bit more. Um, we're going to go to our, our variables. And what we need is to create a new variable. It's going to be the spawn pawn. And it's going to be of type pawn. Now, we, I tried this earlier using actor and it, and it had an issue, um, but we're just going to type in pawn. And we need basically, um, bring this out a little bit, we need of type an object reference. So let's get... So here is the original begin play. Um, do I want to work with the... I'm going to break the link here. And I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and for begin play, what I want to do is I want to uh, get the player controller. And I want to get the control, get the control pawn. So when it spawns in, it's going to give me a, it's going to give me basically a, that spawned in that pawn. So that's where we're going to set this. So that return value is going to be here. And so begin play, we're just going to, keep, we're going to set that value. And now that we've done that, I can drag in a set. plug-in right here. And then for our purposes, we're just going to go in, we're going to use keyboard 4. There we go. So now we've done we've done this. When we go and go play the, again, the third person map, here is the original Goldie, Mousy, Techie. When I hit 4, I'm going back to my original. course the the triggers that we are aren't set up for this type of multiplayer you know it's it's when someone when something leaves it even though those guys are inside so things to be aware about um, as you as you go on um, when you build multiplayer you, you track how, who is inside your in your triggers but we can worry about that another time So that's the first thing. It's basically showing you, hey, here's here's inputs. Hey, we can get we can get there. You know, your your player controller is possessing, out of the gates, possessing a spawn. You know, when we spawn in the world, again. Where did we start? I mean, here is the player start. This is where the player is being spawned into the world here, in our case. And we're giving a we're given a pawn based on that when we spawned in. All right. Let's go back to our slides. So we talked about player controller and how we can possess things. Player state. That's just basically um, 
information. This is a this is for replication. Uh, keep track of information about a specific player that needs to be shared to other clients. So your name, your score, these are all things that are being kept in the player's name. Uh, pawn, we just talked about it, is what the, it's the first level that can be possessed by a controller. Character is a subclass for basically humanoids. And there's a character movement uh, component for it. There's a, a vehicle, vehicle uh, class, so this is... Uh, simulated to behavior of vehicles may be to find the movement and physical of a vehicle, also handle replication predict, in prediction in multiplayer games. All right. So again, and uh, character movement is also replicated as well. So HUD class. So essentially, basically, when you are building out your game, you're going to have a HUD a class that is your HUD. Now later on, we're going to we're going to do this um, set up the HUD in a very particular way this week. But as we go forward, we're going to learn about uh, Unreal and Graphic Motion U UGM. And that's basically uh, that plus widgets are basically we're going to, your, your HUD is going to consist of different widgets that attach to it to control and do what it needs, needs to be. So like ma main menu has different widgets showing different things. And we'll worry about what how that is controlled later on. Um, for this week, we're going to build a HUD class. So I'm actually going to jump in. Let's take a look. Go back to our. I'm going to go here. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to create a new blueprint class. And in this case, I'm going to open up all classes because HUD's not in these common ones. And I'll type HUD here. So I'm going to click on HUD. Select. And this is going to be BP. Try this again. BP. HUD time. And there's not going to be anything in the in the um, in the viewport. So we'll just go straight to here. Um, we won't need these. We will need begin play. Um, but there is a HUD event receive uh, event receive draw HUD. And this is every every frame. How are we drawing the HUD? Um, for our purposes right now, there is a. We're going to drag this off. There is a uh, draw There we go. We want to, under the HUD, we want to draw text. And that's going to bring up target is HUD. And, you know, what is the target itself? What is the text? Um, and for our purposes, we're going to create a variable here called uh, time. And it's going to be an integer. We're going to go back. And so basically, um, one of the things that we can do with text, we can, uh, we can, there's a, uh, a pen. Append uh, there you go string append and this will allow us to be to, to go here and be basically so first thing we're gonna do is this is gonna be its return value and then here um, we can go in and type in time give a space and then we'll take the variable for time We'll get it and we'll plug it into here and it will convert and it will automatically give us uh, basically integer to string conversion for us. So when we write to the screen, it's going to be time, space, whatever that time is. I'm going to scale this up to three so we can see it. I'm going to do screen screen size, uh, screen of 30 units in and 50 units down. And that should give us a good, good position. I'm going to compile this. Go back. I'm going to bring this over here like the others. Go back to the third person map. I'm going to press play and be like, well, we haven't used our HUD class yet. So again, we have our world settings already right here. I'm going to close it for one moment and go back to window and it's under world settings. And in our case right here, we're going to go, we've got the HUD class. It's the default HUD class. We're going to go to BP HUD timer. And when we press play in this case, you can see that I've got time up there zero. I'm going to go back to my third person, uh, my HUD timer, 
and I'm going to turn this to a red. Okay, compile, go back, and you can see now it's time in red. Now, this time is not looking very good, and it's because I've scaled it up. Again, what we would be doing here is it wouldn't be, uh, basically, we wouldn't be building this the way, way we would do, like when we start using UGM and start using widgets, we'd build this completely different. So this is just showing you, hey, here's HUD. So we've set up the um, event, you know, that the event here. So the next thing on what we're dealing with with the timer is with begin play. I'm going to grab this. Oh, I'm still running. That's why. There we go. Um, so one of the first things we need to do is we need to make an event. So right click under add event, add custom event, and then we're going to call this count. And what count is basically do, what it's going to do is basically we're going to get time and we're going to increment it. So every time count gets called, we're going to add one to the timer. Um, in order to do this, we're going to set, we need a node call set event sorry, set timer by event. To bring this down. And we're going to plug this in up here to the event. So that's the event it's going to call every. Um, what's the time? One second. And we want the loop. I'll compile this. Uh, make sure I save everything just to be on the safe side. Go back to my third person map. And you'll see that now that it is counting seconds. And that essentially is our second piece of what we're doing here. All right. Let me go back. Let's go through the rest of our slides. Um, and I've just shown you basically between the possession, that's the first, first assignment. The first lecture piece. The second lecture piece is basically uh, what I just did with the HUD. The third piece is going to be a, a, a um, an object that's going to move. We'll talk about how to set that up in a moment. Um, game instances again created only when the game is closed. So we've talked we've talked a lot about game session. We've talked a lot about these already. So we we're going to use this array. So I'm going to jump jump back to Unreal. And so we're going to go back to our content draw, and I'm going to make uh, a new blueprint class. And this is going to be a type actor, and this is going to be BP Path Runner. All right. So the first thing I'm going to go in here under variables, I'm going to make a new variable. Um, it's going to be my path list, and the variable type is going to be of actor, and it's going to be of uh, an object reference. And now I'm going to click the button here. This allows me to say, is it a single reference, is it an array reference, a sets, or maps? We want to use array, so that we, we have got multiple. And this will be instance editable, so we'll be, uh, be able to edit this in, in the, uh, the level editor. Um, for our purposes, we're just going to go and we're going to add a cube. And I'm going to make this 0.5, make it a pole. And just for the sake of argument, um, I'm going to take its collision and turn it to no collision at all. So that it, we're not worrying about it colliding with things. So now that I've got the path, I'm actually going to go in. I'm going to add another variable here. Go back to single. 
and this is going to be a float. This is move move speed. I'm going to compile that and set that to 300. And then I'm going to add another boolean. And this is going to be, call this with in range. Um, and I'm going to set this to 50. So basically we're saying how many units do we need to, do we need to be within, um, this object needs to be with the other object in order to be close enough for our purposes. And then there's going to be one more variable I'm going to add. It's going to be called um, has die and this is going to be a boolean. Uh, I'm going to make sure these are all instance editable so that we can we can play with these as we see fit. So I'm going to I've compiled, uh, save everything, and then I'm just going to drop instance of the path runner into the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my path runner. I'm going to grab this and move it up. 50 so that the bottom of so that the bottom of the cube is at the, the, the registration point of the scene you go back and see it's now correct all right um, go back to the path runner one more time um, I'm gonna go through these kind of, and I'm going to add a category called runner and I'm basically going to add these all To that runner section. File, save. So when we go back, here's the path runner. I am going to uh, close the world settings. And here is the, the, that runner section. So they're all right here. Um, I'm going to add three re rear elements. I'm going to lock the, the I'm going to lock the editor right now so I don't, when I click on something, it doesn't go somewhere else. But basically, I'm going to take player one, drop that to you, the player two, drop that there, player three. So basically, I'm using that first assignment to be the path points for this. So, so far, so good. All right. So you can see I can, you know, play, play with the values here. All right. Let's go back to our event graph, and we're going to start building... Um, I don't, do I need to do anything in begin play? I do need one more variable, and it's going to be my, uh, uh, it will be my list index. And this is going to be uh, an integer. And again, I'm going to add that to the, And it's going to start at zero. All right. What? Why is this important? Because uh, so the first thing is I'm going to, um, and then I also need one more variable. I'm going to need a move direction variable, and this is going to be a vector. Okay. Set that to the there as well. All right, let's start with making some functions. So first one is going to be um, set move direction. And this is basically where we're going to take our path list, get the path list, and it's going to ask get. And it basically for your, your utilities, get, get a copy is what we're looking for. I know it's odd that it says a copy. And we're going to go grab our pathless index, and we're going to plug that into the get. 
index here. So wherever that index is, basically we're going to get out, out, out in my path list. Um, and from here, we're going to get uh, we want the actor world uh, Here we go, get actor location. And we're gonna go down here, we're gonna type self. So we're gonna reference to our to our own own actor. Uh, we're gonna copy and paste that node, and we're going to do the same thing here. So now we know where the actor is and we know where we are at. We can do vector vector math. We can subtract A from B. So this is the B, where we're going, A, where we're at. We can do a subtraction. And boom, we now know the direction we are going. Um, we will take this and we'll normalize it. So this is basically taking the vector and bring it to a, a, a length of one. And then now we can go to our move direction. We can set it. I'm going to compile this, go back to our event graph, and we don't need begin overlap. We don't need, uh, we will need tick. Uh, but here's begin. We can now grab that set move direction. We can now set that in. Right. The next function we're going to write is basically going to be move object. And essentially, we're going to take our move direction, and we're going to take our move speed. And we need to go to move object. We actually need to give it input. We need to give it uh, delta seconds. And this is a float. So let's just let's, let's reorder this. So delta seconds time move speed. Now we know how how much we are moving this particular frame, and then when we multiply it by the direction. So I'm gonna actually do the multiplication here, and we'll add a pin. So we are now multiplying by how much we are moving this frame, and then we can multiply it by the direction. Remember that vectors have both a direction and a and a. Um, have a direction and they also have a um, they can be a direction and they can have a length as well at the same time. They're two properties. So basically when we normalize the vector down we brought the length down to one. That's why that again the set move direction that's why that is normalized. This basically sets that back down to a value a length of one. So we're not so we can then later, later here multiply that by its speed and how much this frame to get this is the the resulting this is the result that's re, that's resulting um, the delta this is change from where we are to where we need to be and then we're basically what we need to do is again uh, self get actor location. And we can add these together. Oops, the wiring is weird. And now we can do, I'm going to do self again. Set actor. And we are going to just drop that in right there. And then we'll wire it up, bring this in tighter. And we're trying to like make this seem reasonable.
So, so far, so good. I'm going to recompile this. And then when we go to our third person map, uh, the other, actually, hold on, before I go, I go back to my event graph. So again, I've got set move direction. And on tick, I'm going to get the move object. I'll wire it in like this. And again, by making this a, a, a component, like, like a, a node, by making a function, making a custom node, by doing that, it makes it much easier to, to write out this blueprint. And we're gonna compile. We'll go back to our third person map. Uh, we are right here, so I'll press play. And where is it here? Uh, delta seconds. Close. Oh, I'm not plugging in. I did not plug in the delta seconds. There we go. So off it goes there. And it went through and it's keep going. So the next thing that we need to do is be able to tell it, uh, it needs to know when it's, too, when it's close. So we're going to write a new function. Uh, is, is with, with, sorry, is close enough. Is close. I'm oh, sorry. Is close. To, uh, is close to target. And I'm going to go back to the set move direction, and I'm literally going to grab all of these these pieces again, because this is basically setting up the vector from between us us to our uh, from itself to its target. So I'm going to copy these. jump back over to is close we can drop in this right here and we can ask instead of the of uh, normalizing to get the direction we can ask for its length here's vector length and we can literally take this and um, there is again within the within range variable so if the vector are, is there is less than or equal to the within range. Then we can, and so what's interesting here is what we're going to do is basically we're going to go back to our, we're going to add an output. Um, is in range. We're going to make that a boolean. And essentially, we're going to plug in that result here. And that's going to make this easy. If we're going to compile this, what's going to end up happening, we go back to our event graph. The next thing we'll grab is close to target. And it's going to calculate the result here. And this is going to go to an if. I can just plug that in right there. And and all we have, and if, if it's true, then we've got things we can do, we can do after the fact. All right, so if it's close to target, um, what we need to do is two things. Uh, first is um, set next target. And we'll come back and write the code for that in one moment. But we're going to grab uh, set next target. And then we're going to then set the move direction again. So let's let's do the next next target. Um, compile. Let's jump. Close. 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 Okay. Set next target. So basically, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our index. So we're going to move, get the index, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to increment it. And the next thing, so once, so once we've done that, so the issue is that again, we'll start. At, we start at zero. The first array element is zero. So we do zero or counting um, with our arrays. So we start at zero. We go. We go, We hit hit our next point. We go to one. We hit our next point. We go to two. That's the third element of the array. If when we hit that point, and we go to three, there's no array, array element there for the for that. 
So we've got to check against the index whether, so what we want is get the path list, and we're going to get the length of the array. So the next check is if it's, so we could do is equal, but we want to do greater than an equal, just to be on the safe side. So if this is greater than equal to the, this index, um, again, we're going to bring an if here and wire the Boolean into there. If that's true, we need to get our, set our index and set it back to zero. So far, so good. We're going to compile. And we'll come back to our third person map. We'll press play. And off it goes. And it bounced. It hit that one. It's going over here to Mossy. It's like, hey, Mossy's cool. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to hit Techie. And it's going to go off to. So I'm going to bounce to Goldilocks now. And now when it goes, it's a good, now it's now going to Techie. And the issue that we're going to have at hand is like, okay, it's going to hit Techie. It's going to come towards me. Uh, but I just ran away. It has no clue what to do. All right. If you remember back in the path runner, we made a variable called has dynamic uh, direction. And we're going to go back into our, our move object. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring in reference of has dynamic and we're going to bring in is an if statement. And if it's true, we're going to basically, um, this is going to get messy pretty quickly. So this is going to get wired into here first. If that's true, we're going to grab, actually, I'm going to bring this up here. So if if this is true, it has dynamic direction, we're going to get our set move direction function, and we're going to wire it in here. And this is going to go into a set actor location. Now, I'm going to move this up. If this is false, then we're going to skip that, and false is going to go right in here as well. And then we're going to go to where's the path runner? We are going to turn it, turn that on. Uh, save everything just to be on the same side, and we'll press play. And I'll jump to the techie because that's the next one. You can see that. Okay, it's now coming towards me. Now it's coming towards me in this direction. I'm going to run away from it because I can. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And it's going to go through walls because we gave it no collision. It's going to go through the fire because it has no collision. But you can see that here it is. Uh, let's get closer to the gold, Goldilocks. And I'm now going to go run into it. And now it's going to go off. And here is Mossy. see that they as I jumped as I transferred to another one and while they were in the air they have to stay in the air that's a interesting quirk of what's going on but you can see that here's the path runner. it's going between those three as they are in the air And 
there you go. That is the third piece of this lab. And you can see basically like, hey, I made the path runner to the, these objects and I could, again, that first basically allowed me to switch between them. Gave me Gave, gave me basically a way to like play with this object, um, and this is you know starting interactions. You know this is this is going you know this is where we are starting right now. There are more PowerPoint slides. Go read them because they talk about more mathematical what's going on within the hood. How you know when you multiply a a number against a vector, why, how that is happening, was the, uh, read that. Any questions from anyone here? Um, any questions from Discord? So I'm, I'm okay with here. I'm going to stop the recording here.